Hare Krishna Maharaj. Right, Maharaj? In Pittsburgh. Oh, Pittsburgh. Oh, my gosh. Pittsburgh in Pennsylvania State. <laughs> Hare Krishna yes. Maharaj. Please accept my humble obeisances. All goes to you. All goes to Prabhupada. It's down the street. <laughs> <laughs> You're pretty close to us, Maharaj. <laughs> yeah, we're getting closer. <laughs> <laughs> As they say in the neck, what's the, I forgot the phrase. About? Something, the neck of the woods and the something, in the neck, I forgot that slang. Yeah, you're in my neck of the woods. Thank you, Marge. That's what I mean. <laughs> and it's all yours, Marge. Okay, thank you. I'll see you. Om Namo. Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Jalau Kasam Jaleyadvan Mahanto Dhyantyani Yasaha Durbalan Balilam Rajan Mahanto Balilo Mitaha <coughs> Avam Balistair Yadubir Mahabir Mahabir Itaram Vibohu Yadun Yayubir Yanyom Bubaram Sanjaharaha O king, as in the ocean, the bigger and stronger aquatics swallow up the smaller and weaker one, so also the Supreme Personality of Godhead to lighten the burden of the earth has engaged the stronger Yadu to kill the weaker and the bigger Yadu to kill the smaller. <clears throat> Purport. In the material world, the struggle for existence and survival of the fittest are laws of the material world. There is disparity between conditioned souls due to everyone's desire to lord it over the material resource. This very mentality of lording it over the material nature is the root cause of conditioned life. And to give facility to such imitation lords, the illusionary energy of the Lord has created a disparity between conditioned living beings by creating the stronger and the weaker in every species of life. <laughs> the mentality of lording it over the material nature and the creation has naturally created a disparity and therefore the law of struggle for existence. In the spiritual world, there is no such disparity, nor is there a struggle for existence. In the spiritual world, there is no struggle for existence because everyone there exists eternally. There is no disparity between everyone because everyone wants to render service to the Supreme Lord. And no one wants to imitate the Lord in becoming the beneficiary. The Lord, being creator of everything, including the living beings, who actually is the proprietor and joy of everything that be. But in the material world, by the spell of illusion maya, this eternal relationship with the Supreme Personality of Godhead is forgotten. And so the living being is conditioned under the laws of struggle for existence and survival of the fittest. Om Agyan Timirandasya Gena Jena Salakaya Chaksu Unmilita Myena Tasmai Shri Gadave Namaha Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prestaya Bhutalai Srimakti Bhakti Vedanta Swami Niti Namine Namaste Saraswati Deve Gauravani Vicharine Nirvise Sunyavari Asyatya Dezatarine, Panchakalpa Tarugas Cha Kripa Sindhu Pavacha, Titanam Pavane Pyo Vaishnavi Yonamaha. 
Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadar Sivasari Gaur Bhakta Rindam Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 So Krishna explains throughout the Bhagavad Gita and many different statements that he ultimately is the supreme proprietor, the supreme controller, and the supreme source of everything that exists. And therefore, he mentions that both material and spiritual, Prabhupada says, Aham Sarvasya Prabhago, Papat Sarad Prabhupada I am the source of both material and spiritual world. Everything comes to me. The wise who know this engage in my devotional service and worship me with all their heart. So he gives a statement, and he, say, he says, anyone who actually knows this is actually wise. And their wisdom meant, uh, inspi entire, ins inspires them, impels them to render service to the Lord. Because people don't accept that the Lord is the source, or even if they accept that he's the source, they still think, mistakenly, that everything is there for their enjoyment. They say this the family the father creates many things, for the benefit of the family's needs and for the benefit of the family's enjoyment. And so therefore we are children of God. We are meant to take advantage of that. That's true up to a point where one understands how much they actually need in order to live and to perform their, their activities in a easy, and beneficial way but it's not that we simply fight amongst each other for the for the property of the lord which is going on today in fact that is the nature of the material world and that material world sets up and it says here disparity between the conditioned living beings some are stronger, some are weaker, some are greater, some are lesser. And therefore, this hard struggle to accumulate, to enjoy, and to control is the feature of the conditioned soul's uh, suffering in the material world. They say the material world is for suffering, and that is true in essence. As Krishna mentions that in the Bhagavad Gita many times, at least two or three times, he mentions that point, that this world is meant for suffering. But those who take the devotional service, those who understand that the ingredients that make up this material energy is belonging to the supreme source of that energy, the Lord, and therefore they can live nicely, take what they need, and render service to the Lord by offering back what belongs to him in devotion to him. The most important thing is the devotion. But in performing devotional service, you have to have ingredients to offer. So we offer what our time, our resources, our uh, material possessions, our intelligence, our abilities, all of these, as Krishna mentions throughout the Gita, are coming from him. Bhaktaram yagya tapasam sarvaloka maheshiram suhidam sarvabhutanam shantam yam yatam rich chati. That he is the supplier, controller, but he's also at the same time the best friend. But we refuse to accept Krishna's position. And we want to be, as it says here, we, the, the disease is the desire to be the controller or the proprietor to enjoy everything. 
Now that is the disease that, you know, I have what I want have, but I want more. Why do people want more than they actually need? Because they can never be satisfied by what anything material. Because we are not material by nature, we can only use material things to support our material life in this world, our needs for the body. We can't enjoy material. Material things are not meant for our enjoyment because ultimately, in the highest sense of the understanding, which is the complete sense, the correct sense, is everything is spiritual. Krishna cannot create anything material. Material, in its real definition, means to be separated from its source. As soon as something becomes separated from the source, it's material. Just like the uh, finger works for the benefit of the body. And therefore, the finger is part of the body and it's, it's supporting the whole. So when we work for the uh, satisfaction of the Lord, who is the source of everything and the foundation by which we exist, we are like that finger that's supporting the needs of the body. But when we decide not to, or want to become independent, create our own little world of control, then we become like that a finger that is no longer like a diseased finger or a cut off finger. It's still part of the body or maybe it's been separated from the body. So therefore it can't, not, can't do anything. All it can do is just be thrown away because it has no use anymore. So ultimately, ultimately everything is spiritual. But we in the material world see things in relationship to ourselves. In other words, we see things in terms of we are the center. And that is the problem. As long as we see ourselves as the center and see everything around us as meant for our enjoyment or for our use, in some in different way, then we are in illusion or maya. We're, at, we're seeing actually well, what is not the reality. And therefore, we miss that actually everything, and it's a very, very simple understanding. We come into this world and we're handed everything that we, that we have, including the body. We can't create our own body, but we're given the body by our parents who have gotten their body by their parents. When you take it all the way back to the source, it comes from the Supreme Lord himself. So anything we have or anything we are is given to us. And therefore, when we claim proprietorship, we're in the mentality of, of the type of a thief who sees something and he wants it, and therefore he takes it and says, now it's mine. But he's a thief, and therefore, the owner, when the owner finds out, the thief will be caught and be punished. In the same way, the living entities are trying to steal all of God's property to be used for their selfish interest. And because of that, they get punished by the laws of material energy, which are the police officers that work in connection with the transcendental government of the Lord. And so this is the, and then you see, then now, first we steal from Krishna, then we want to steal from each other. So this is what this verse says here, that those who are stronger or greater uh, exploit those who are lesser and weaker. And you see that in the world today, kind of big countries will go into areas with smaller countries and try to control those countries, get the resources for those countries, set up their own government in these countries, and in order to uh, exploit the benefits of that country. And you see, and then wars break out, <laughs> and then there are so many intrigues and problems. This world is like that. Everyone is fighting against each other. Mm -hmm. 
no one is happy. Everyone is still making plans <clears throat> to get more. Or if they're not making plans to get more, they're plan making plans to keep what they have, which is not even possible either because everything is subject to, to the time element. So this, uh, <clears throat> this exploitation of the resources of the law or the world starts with denying the actual proprietor. And then once we go to that next step is to fight amongst ourselves. <laughs> and so you see different nations, different uh, nationalities, different cultures, and so now people find so many different reasons why they should be separated from someone else based on this artificial idea that we are different. Materially, we are different. Spiritually, we are the same. Material, material differences will dissipate in the, ultimate, in the principle of time. But spirituality is eternal. So all living entities are the same on the spiritual platform. And in, in, in our connection with God is the foundation by which we have a, a uh, what we say, happy and successful relationship with each other. Because no one is trying to exploit each other. Everyone is trying to serve the Lord. And therefore, each person is working to serve the Lord or assist others to do the same thing. Therefore, the Lord is pleased and everyone is happy. No one is trying to gain anything through their own selfish ideas and plans. So we see that even in spiritual circles, this is struggle to be in a better position, struggle to have more, struggle to be, in, to be able to control others. And so this is a very deep an artha. It comes from the same principle that leads the conditioned souls into the material world. It's the same, it's the root cause of material existence, the desire to control, the desire to enjoy separately for the Lord. Now, if you want to control for the Lord, that is spiritual. And sometimes devotees or others who are in knowledge, they want to get into situations where they can control and use that control to serve the Lord. That is Krishna consciousness also. So the control factor can be dovetailed when Krishna is the object of the service and not one selfish or individual interest. And Prabhupada talks about this much in the Bhagavatam, especially in the fourth canto, that you see in the material world, there is this somewhat desire to overcome all of these problems and live peacefully amongst each other. At least a certain class of men have that. But they have the wrong formula. They think that by uniting amongst ourselves, without coming to the foundational point of existence, which means our spiritual essence, they can create some type of unity. And Prabhupada would always point to the United Nations. It was a result of so many wars that this organization sprung up to somehow or other bring people to a table of discussion so wars would be prevented. So the United Nations has been there for, you know, about 80 years now. And Prabhupada said the flags are only increasing and the wars are still going on. Why? Because they miss the thing. It's like if you do a mathematical problem and you're doing some very complicated math, if you don't have basic math in line, then whatever you do on the higher level will continue to bring you farther away from the solution. So we say one and one is two, two and two is four. But if you say two and two is five, and you make that mistake, and you continue on with your calculations, 
and then you get farther away from the answer. So the basic principle, the basic mistake is the living entity doesn't understand the relationship with the Supreme, nor do they understand how to bring about happiness in life, which is based on that relationship. Because they think that I can be happy by material activities, material acquisitions. And so there is this hard struggle. And so now they've created so many atomic bombs now. Because you don't steal my property and I won't steal your property. We have these bombs to protect each other. It's called the, what do they call it? The, uh, uh, it's a certain terminology they use. Uh, balance of fear. Yeah, you fear me and I fear you. So therefore, because we fear each other, we won't do anything. But Prabhupada said, no, that principle doesn't work because he said it's, the laws of material energy work in such a way is that when you create these very powerful weapons, you will use them. He said they will use them in due course of time. You drop a bomb on my head and kill me, and I'll drop a bomb on your head, and you're finished. So, because again, they still can't see the foundation where life actually develops, and that is in relationship to the Lord. So, the farther you get away from that understanding, the more you create these this false type of civilization based on control and on fear. In the material world, the fear aspect is very strong. It's so strong that uh, people will uh, have will not even do things because they fear something will happen because of that. And this fearing is so strong. And of course, the ultimate fear is the fear of death. But this fear is very strong. But Prabhupada explains this fear means two. He uses that terminology. And when he refers to two, he means that one and two, two things. He says one who is in, in pure consciousness or spiritual consciousness, they don't see anything outside of Krishna. They see his energy in relationship to him. And because it's Krishna's energy, it's also controlled by Krishna. And therefore, the energy cannot work without the sanction of the source of energy, Krishna, the energetic. So a devotee is not fear because they know that anything that is happening is under the control of the Lord. Therefore, a devotee is fearless. And if Krishna wants to take the devotee back to him, he may use a material situation in order to bring his devotee back to him. But ultimately, a one who's fixed in spiritual consciousness is Abhayam. Like Prabhupada's name was Abhay. He was born with that name, Abhay. And later on, Abhay Charanada Vindam. Abhay means, by means fear, and Abhay means without fear. And uh, this is the, uh, the, uh, problem in the material world. Everyone is fearful of each other. And they're fearful of everything. Like they're, they have this, uh, these different websites you can go on to find out what people are afraid of. They're afraid of everything. Some people are afraid of dogs. Some people are afraid of frogs. People are afraid of spiders. People are afraid of each other. <laughs> people are afraid of certain sounds that come into the environment and then this fear aspect is so strong that people have a whole list of uh, items that create fear in their existence so this is the material world and everyone's fearful and therefore everyone fights with each other thinking if i could beat and control others then i'm in a better position and i am strong we have the story in the Christian tradition of one, it's famous, it's called the battle between David and Goliath. 
Goliath was a very huge and powerful warrior. And there was a war going on between these two, uh, two cities. I can't remember, Damascus, I think, was one of them, and I can't remember the other one. So Goliath was this huge, powerful warrior. And uh, David was on the other side. And he was righteous. He was religious. And he came out to face Goliath. Everyone, they were going to fight one to one. And there was no chance David could win. <clears throat> Goliath was a monster, powerful, but he knew how to fight. But the late David uses intelligence. And says, therefore, intelligence is more is greater than power. Even if you're weaker than someone on the physical level, as it says here, if you're more intelligent and you know how to use your intelligence, you can be victorious and you can also protect yourself in so many ways. Uh, I don't remember the whole story of David and Goliath, but ultimately. Uh, David took a slingshot and, sh and put a rock in it and fired it and hit Goliath in the head and killed him. He simply, that was the only weapon he had was a slingshot. But so he used his intelligence how to fight. Uh, so in the same way, uh, one who was actually intelligent is superior to one who is powerful, who is not. Just like you see sometimes uh, somebody who is really knows how to fight, small person, maybe real skinny, he can take on a big guy with a lot of muscles and just destroy him. Why? Because he's more intelligent and he's using his intelligence to, uh, to fight properly. So although there is this disparity, as it says here, between the conditioned soul, stronger and weaker, which is created by Krishna in order for the living entities to, to go on with their struggle to try to enjoy the Lord's property and remain an illusion. Still, um, it is about ultimately understanding that Everything belongs to the Lord. Ishavasha midam sarvam yat kichat yam tida tena jat tena bundi jahamagudaha kisiswidam. This verse is the first verse in the Sri Yushupanishad, which says that everything animate and inanimate in existence is owned and created by the Lord. And therefore, everyone is entitled to live according to their needs. The word is used as quota. So a grihasta may have a, a little bit larger quota than a brahmachari, a sannyasi. But everyone has their quota. And one should understand what is my quota and to live nicely. And then life is easy because then doesn't, one doesn't struggle hard to accumulate or to get means by which I can accumulate. So uh, a devotee is free from fear. He simply depends on the mercy of the Lord and lives according to their need. And if they get extra, they use it. If they find themselves in scarcity, they just depend on the Lord and the Lord always takes care of the devotee. So, um, interesting and very important message here the mentality of lording over the material world has created a disparity and therefore law of struggle for existence and the word struggle is very much prominent in the material world everyone is struggling 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 and even if they're not struggling with some some outside forces, they're struggling with their mind or their body. Struggle. Therefore, become Krishna conscious and live according to the plan of the Lord, which is 
which he makes his plan available through his bona fide representative, the spiritual master. And by doing so, one can be happy. And if you need something, depend on the Lord and engage in his service. The Lord takes care of his devotees. Hare Krishna. Thank you so much, Marsh, for such a wonderful class. And interestingly, um, the topic that you spoke has been like a discussion amongst devotees for the past few days, few weeks. And it's all sinking and falling into place. So thank you so much for this wonderful class. A chat just popped up. Okay. Uh, Marge, I'm going to stop sharing and I'm going to ask devotees if you have any questions, any clarification, anything that's coming to mind on this point and anything that's related to this, please do raise your hand and I will call upon you to ask, you know, to, to ask your question. Yes, Silpesh Prabhu, go ahead. Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my obeisances. So, glory to Shri Prabhupada. Uh, this last point you made, just depend on Krishna and he will provide for us. And ultimately, I see that that's the solution to our material world, the, the, the sort of fix we're in, being in the material world. But, you know, when we have fear, fear can be extremely overwhelming. It can paralyze us. And I wanted to ask, like, how can we overcome that? How can we? Use I know it's not right to use Krishna consciousness in the sense to overcome things, but some things like fear can really keep us away from Krishna in some ways. Well, the question is how to overcome fear. Yes, yes, Maharaj. Yes. Yeah, we we use that. We mentioned that that fear means two. You see something outside of Krishna which there is nothing outside of Krishna. There's Krishna and Krishna's energy. And Krishna's energy works under his control. Rake Krishna Moreke, Mori Krishna Rakeke. If Krishna wants to uh, protect you, there's nothing in the creation that can harm you. But if Krishna doesn't want to protect you or doesn't allow give you protection, there's nothing you can do to protect yourself. So we take the basic principles of life in such a way as that we live according to natural laws. We don't, we live according, and we take care. Everyone is taking care. But the thing is that we depend on Krishna. Just like in the, in, just like today in the Ukraine, the war is going on. And it's a pretty fierce battle there at many times. But the devotees are protected. They're in the midst of it, but still the devotees are going on. And some of them are out there distributing books. In fact, I think it was the year last year, uh, Ukraine led the world in book distribution. So they, they, they have come to the point of understanding you know, full dependence on Krishna. And I, I'm seeing they're, they're also chanting the Shringa mantras, they're praying, they're doing various activities, which brings about, you know, awareness of the Lord. So we have to live like that. If you want something in this world, you have to pray for it. If you, have to want, if you want something in this world, you have to act to get it. So if you want Krishna's protection, you have to act in such a way as to be worthy of that protection, but at the same time, you have to pray for it. What do I mean by being worthy of that? That means uh, if, we, if we don't live according to the laws set up by material energy, then we put ourselves in a marginal position. And we can be we can be somewhat overwhelmed when overwhelmed when we run by the two around. So Delphi is given us formulas by how by how which we can live. And even if you are in the most dangerous situation, if you're protected by Krishna, you're free. And even if you're in the nicest situation, if you're not protected by Krishna, at any time, something could 
could over you could be overcome by something. So depend on Krishna, that's all. We're depending on our own intelligence. And we do that up to a certain point. But beyond that, we can't prevent things from happening. All we can do is act in such a way as to follow the, the laws of material energy. Raj, can you explain a bit more about following the laws of material energy? Uh, how yeah. should we do I mean, there's basic morality. You don't. There's basic morality. There's basic civility. Following the laws of material energy means uh, live according to your needs, not more, not less. Um, the, uh, um, don't cause others difficulty because if you cause others difficulty. It'll come back to you. In other words, basic morality. Uh, no illicit sex, no intoxication, no meat eating, no gamble. That's morality personified. But if we say, well, I'm going to be protected by Krishna, but I'm going to, I'm going to disobey his instructions, then <laughs> it's contrary. Mm -hmm. I want my father to protect me, therefore I'm gonna go walking out in the middle of the street in a busy, you know, thoroughfare, and he'll protect me. That's stupid. <laughs> And even if somehow or other, due to ignorance, a devotee fails to recognize how to do things properly, Krishna will protect them. But it's not like we can simply go on and just do whatever we want and expect Krishna's protection. Thank you, Maharaj. That's, that was really, really helpful. I listened yeah. to it again, however, just to get it into my you mind. Know, human civility gives you certain things. You know, when you walk down the stairs, you hold on to the banister. Why is the banister there? So you don't fall. You have something to hold on to if you slip. And so if you fall down the stairs because you didn't hold on to the banister, that's your fault. <laughs> Can't blame Krishna for that. <laughs> There's basic ways to, to prevent calamities from occurring simply by following the, nat the natural tendency of how to live in, in this world. <laughs> but of course, our society is somewhat created more and more ways by which people can find themselves in difficulty. That's... So now they got this 5G, you know, this EMF thing. Actually, what was it? Magnetic field. What is it? Elect electromagnetic field. Now, just like I was in Slovenia, and uh, I have an apartment up on the top floor. So, uh, and the devotees on the floor below me, there was three devotees there. So they run the internet program. They have the Wi-Fi there. So I get the benefit from that. So the thing broke down. So they got another one and they got 5G. So when I heard about it, I said, that's, I said, no. You got to turn it in. You got it. You can't have 5G. That's too much. You guys are going to get sick. You're going to have problems. You're going to have headaches. You're going to have difficulties. And you may even, you know, wind up getting cancer. So they didn't see that. They were going to go ahead. But I, I made a lot of noise. And I made enough noise where they switched back to fortune. 
So I could have said, well, you know, just let it go. But if you know something is hazardous, then why do it? Just like it says, you don't take salt and milk together. That's one thing you have to avoid 100%. But if you don't, if you don't know that, you could get leprosy. Because leprosy is caused by drinking milk and salt together. And so these things we have to know. <laughs> Basic things on how to live in this world. So we don't become victimized. But ultimately, we have to depend on Krishna. Because even if you start making mistakes, if you depend on Krishna, Krishna will give you intelligence how to overcome things how to get back to the normal way of living, or the proper way of living. Maharaj, there, there are so many types of radiation around us. We just can't avoid it. So it's like you said, we can only depend on Krishna now. You know, living in a city that everything around us, there's just so much well, great. You can't power. avoid it. The Prabhupada said, get out of the cities and get out to the farms and live the natural life. So the cities are another, and so the word city is another word for hell. And we're stuck in these places. It doesn't mean we don't have the choice to leave. We can leave. We can set up, Prabhupada said, set up these farm communities. He said, live naturally, depend on Krishna, depend on nature. Nature has provided everything for what you need. All medicines that doctors use, they extract from different herbs in nature, and then they add their own. Of course, they also create their own false medicine. But you can cure every disease simply by, by understanding how to use various ingredients within nature, even cancer. Krishna's provided everything, but we don't know how to live. Therefore, we have to live in a marginal existence and always be in harm's way for something. But Krishna is still protecting. Thank you for those two wonderful questions, Sir Prash Prabhu. Help me to learn too. Thank you. Any other questions from devotees? Anything that's coming to your mind? Maharaj, when um one question that I have, Maharaj, is I'm you said that when one has a controlling nature, if they were to use it in service to the Lord, that is a better way to use it. But sometimes we come across situations that that <clears throat> that the controlling nature spills over with, you know, not in the mood of service, but in the mood of um, authoritarian, you know, like, OK, I'm still in control. And I'm thinking again, Marge, this is just my what little is coming to my mind is. I'm thinking that probably the control is connected to fear of losing one's power, even though it's service to the Lord. So how can one balance that marriage where they don't use it in the wrong way in a service to the Lord because they naturally have that controlling nature? Well, that takes some intelligence. Intelligence is based on discrimination, which is one of the features of intelligence to discriminate this can be used and this cannot be used. This should be used. This I should not do. So uh, no one's going to hand that one to you. You're going to have to develop that intelligence by which you can understand and discriminate between what's beneficial and what's not beneficial. If you're in a position of authority, it doesn't mean you you control everybody just because you're an authority. You use your control power, your authority power to benefit others. Same when you, if you use your control power and your benefit, your power for your, for your own benefit too. So these are basic things. You need to have some intelligence to figure that out. And Prabhupada used to say, if you don't have intelligence, then get it from somewhere. somewhere. It's available. I, I, I was thinking about that. was <laughs> nice way you said it. 
Yeah, there's nothing wrong in saying, I just don't know, can you help me? Yeah, that, that doesn't mean one is weak, it means one is using their intelligence to understand something that they can't understand, and therefore they're using their intelligence to find out from others. Another use of intelligence. Marge, um, before I ask my next question, um, if anyone else has questions, please, you know, do raise your hand. Such a very nice topic. Marge, um, wh why do people, and sometimes I run into this, why does one generally fear or they have this block of receiving empowerment? For example, if someone is, doesn't want, is, you know, um, a leader, for example, and you're talking about, you know, using the intelligence of discrimination, but at the same time, the person wants to, um, you know, give empowerment or, you know, what, but the received, but the recipient has a concern of fear. Why does one has a fear of receiving empowerment, Marge? I, I'm, I'm just, I don't know if that makes sense. But. I think it's more of a fear of responsibility. Because with empowerment comes responsibility. And why is the fear of responsibility? Is it because they want to they not want have to, They feel like they can, either they can't do it or they just don't want to do it. You might call it laziness. You might call it just they want to go along with we're not having that responsibility. People fail to take responsibility for things that are required. But if someone will take a position of responsibility if they can gain something, and sometimes they can't see what, what benefit it will be by me taking that responsibility. The, the benefit is you get the chance to serve. Well, you get the chance to serve in that way. Well, it's just like, you know, sometimes people don't want to get married because I mean, they think it's a big responsibility to maintain a family, take care of children, to provide what is needed. And it becomes somewhat overwhelming just the thought of it. And then I'll you know, think, well, life will be easier without that responsibility. That's one way of thinking. And then there's those who have taken responsibility and have failed at it. And then they, they sometimes reject further responsibility. Thank you, Marge. That really helps my helps me. This question that I've kind of mulled over for some time that really clears that thought that I had. Thank you. A statement by Prabhupada that says, very strong statement. He says, you make advancement in spiritual life by how much you take on the responsibility to engage in service of the Lord. So that's powerful. Therefore, the devotee was eager for, re for advancement wants responsibility because it gives them a chance to make more advancement. But then again, they have to be up to that standard before they can just take on the responsibility. But sometimes well, one will not even be up to the standard, will take on the responsibility, but will we'll work hard to develop the qualities that is needed to carry out the service. I have to really look that that's a powerful uh quote by your prophet Mars. Thank you so much <laughs> for sharing that. It's so powerful. 
find that you have seen the database. I will. I, I was just making notes on what you said so I can go and search in database and pull up, pull it up. It starts off by saying, Prabhupada said, you make advancement in spiritual life or Krishna consciousness, I'm not sure what you mean, by how much you take on responsibility to serve the Supreme Lord. Or to push on this movement of Krishna consciousness. That's the essence. I'm going to look for that, Marge. Thank you. At least I got the, the first half yet that you mentioned. Thank you so much. It's very powerful. Really powerful. Yes, Mother Tirta. Please go ahead, Mother. Hi, oh, Krishna. I, Hare Krishna, Mother. Go ahead. Hi, uh, Krishna, dear Gurudev, thank you so much for that wonderful lecture. And you point everything so clearly and so nicely. As a matter of fact, there is no need for question. Is everything so clear? Is everything so wonderful? Thank you so much. Hi, uh, Krishna Maharaj. Mother Tirta has such a simple heart, so everything is so simple and clear to her. I wish I can follow in your footsteps and be simple like you, Mother. If you look large, then you have it so clear. Just look at him and it's so clear. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mother Tilka. Any other questions from devotees? Anything that's coming, you know, that you would like to ask? Any? It's really a powerful. And we asked devotees if you're able to please turn on your um, camera. That would be really nice. So that we get to, you know, so that Marge gets to see us wherever you're at. If you can please turn your camera on, that would be, if it's possible, please do so. And I'm um, just going down. I believe some devotees might be busy uh, traveling on the road if they're in the US to New Vrindavan. So they might be a little quiet. I don't know. Marge, uh, I have one more question, Marge. We hear this phrase a lot from Sri Prabhupada, you know, the need for cooperation, as you were speaking in your class this morning. And, and he says, your love for me will be shown by how much we cooperate. And sometimes we come across situations where, and, you know, people uh, mis, misuse the, the meaning of corporate means what I say you do kind of a thing as opposed to cooperate. And I'm thinking that means now that we agree to disagree because it's so hard to see someone every day that we know that we have agreed to disagree and put a smile on the face. Marge, how can we, you know, wholeheartedly uh, cooperate with agree to disagree? Like, how can we really imbibe that mood, Maharaj? We have to go above our personal interests and see uh, what, we're trying to accomplish. We're trying to push on Krishna consciousness. We're trying to uh, please the Supreme Lord and his representative. We're trying to get the service done in the nicest possible way. So these are the motivations by which cooperation you know, is developed. If we just, uh, it's not cooperation for the sake of cooperation. There's a, there's a principle or is a goal goal in that cooperative spirit. So in, in that we have to see. So in when there's disagreement or different ideas, as Sila Prabhupada said, disagreement comes because of two things. Leaning towards material desires or what was the other one? Leaning towards material desires. Hmm. In the uh, fourth canto, 30th chapter, verse number eight, Prabhupada talks about cooperation. He says two things that seem like block, or not block, but may impede cooperation. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to fulfill my material desire through Krishna consciousness, and therefore it blocks cooperation because 
the idea is to satisfy Krishna and push our own ideas aside. They go down the page, it's in the verse, in the purport. Let's see here. The unity of Indian, even though people officially unite, let's see, let's see. Yeah. This unity within India with the soul is so strong, strong within this material world that even in the society of Krishna consciousness, members appear sometimes to be disunited due to having different opinions and leaning towards material things. And then Prabhupada clarified, actually in Krishna consciousness, there cannot be two opinions. There is only one goal, to serve Krishna to the best of one's ability. If there is some disagreement over service, such disagreement is to be taken as spiritual. Those who are actually engaged in the service of the Supreme Personality of Godhead cannot be disunited in any circumstance. Very powerful, March 4.30 a.m. I'm going to mark this. Amazing. This is a very powerful verse in purple because it's spoken by Krishna, that verse. Thank you. Powerful. I, I had to make the note of that. That was very, very nice. Thank you, Marge. Any other points from devotees? Anything that's that you would like to ask? Any questions? Yes, Supesh Prabhu, go ahead. Sorry, Marge. I wanted to ask, following on from how you're talking about how we should live under the rules of material nature, and you know how we have so many things affecting us in this world and how herbs can cure us and so forth. But this whole universe, there are cycles in it. There are planets. For example, today is the full moon. And I've noticed a lot of things like today's Hanuman Jayanti as well. So a lot of things happen on like astrological dates and so forth. How much does that affect us as well? And how much can that help us or hinder us in our Krishna consciousness? Well, to the degree that you're not Krishna consciousness, to the degree these external things affect you. When you're Krishna conscious, you're above the material energy, even all of these astrological arrangements. Even if there's some calamity that comes by way of the natural arrangement is like if you studied the astrological arrangements within the last two or three years you could actually see you know how this uh, coronavirus was coming and going according to certain time periods it was all there mentioned in the astrological arrangements And if you understand astrology, you can also understand what will happen in the future. Yeah. But a devotee can protect themselves from all of these things by using their intelligence and depending on Krishna. You have to use your intelligence. You can't just say, I, I depend on Krishna and do anything you want. <laughs> Doesn't work. Hmm. It's like when Prabhupada was, Prabhupada had a question. He, he wanted an answer. So he, was up translating in the middle of the night like he would do every evening. And so he decided to call one of his senior brahmacharis at the time. And he, the senior brahmacharis would sleep outside of the door. And if Prabhupada needed anything in the middle of the night, he would ring his bell. And they would wake up and come in. So Prabhupada rang the bell, 
brahmachari came in that was was actually giriraj who later became giriraj swami so he's just waking up and he sits down in front of Prabhupada and he's waiting for Prabhupada's command. So Prabhupada asks him a question. You know, how will this movement go on once I'm gone? Prabhupada wanted to hear him. See if the devotees could understand the answer. So the response, well, you know, we'll we'll be we'll we'll, do, we'll continue with book distribution, we'll continue by preaching different ways, we'll follow the temple programs. Probably listened to all the answers, but then he gave the answer. He said, this movement will go on by organization and intelligence. Hope that helps, Opesh Prabhu. That's pretty powerful. I think oh, I'm full lost. I feel a little bit <laughs> lost. I need to listen to this recording again and meditate, I think. When you live your life day to day, you organize things in an intelligent way in order to facilitate your needs and your, your, your desires. Same with this movement. Organization and intelligence. Think about it. In order to organize, you have to be intelligent enough to know how to organize. Nobody's going to hold your hand every minute. Just to give you, we depend on Krishna, but we have to use our intelligence. If we don't, then we're not really depending on Krishna. Just like it says, marriage between two people. There should be similar natures, similar likings. So if that's there at the beginning, then it's a good start. Similar nature, similar likings. The Bhagavatam says that. So if people marry outside of that, then they're started off in a deficit. And they have to work with that, try to overcome. But when you start off in, an, in the proper way, then you can build on something. I'm just using that as an example. You want to cook, you need a stove, you need a pot, you need the vegetables, you need the ingredients, and you also need a little bit of know-how on how to cook. <laughs> but you say you might say, well, you might be an expert cook, but you have no no spices. <laughs> And that means you're you're in a you're in a deficit. Uh, Intelligence and organization. So I want, to, I want to go to the temple and it's far away and it's cold out, but I have no transport. <laughs> that makes it difficult to get to the temple. 
So, Manoj, if you're facing, say, a lot of health challenges and so forth, it's using your intelligence, like seek out an Ayurvedic practitioner, maybe even an astrologer, to help you along in this material world, but not to depend on them, but to depend on Krishna ultimately. But we need to use our intelligence along the way to get us there. Papa used these people too. And if he liked what they said, he would take it. If he didn't, then he wouldn't. <laughs> and sometimes he took their advice, not even knowing whether it was good advice or not. He had faith in the person, just like when you get a spiritual master, you may not understand why the spiritual master is saying what he's saying. But you have faith that that spiritual master is bona fide, therefore you can accept it. So faith in the individual, if you're depending on others, is the basis for accepting advice and direction. You go to an astrologer and you don't know the astrologer. Like there was one person, we were talking the other day, one person I know, he got involved with a business deal, but the person that he was getting involved with, he didn't know the person at all, first time, didn't know his reputation. The man seemed to present something he needed, but the man turned out to be a cheater and cheated him. So he should have investigated well, who is this person, see if it, what is his reputation, what is his, you know, uh, background, whether the company was a reputable company. And we were discussing that. And another devotee was saying, yeah, I never make that mistake when I do business. I make sure I know everything ahead of time and who I'm doing business with. So, you know, that means that he didn't use proper intelligence. He went, just went by some external uh, attraction, I think. And so the result was he got cheated. <laughs> Sometimes we have to face value and trust in our intuition as well, because we can't look into everything all the time. Putting our faith in the government, but the government's cheating us at every minute. <laughs> so Prabhupada said, you know, start your own communities. Make themselves to think about the pen on the experience. Society for, for Krishna consciousness or just for living in general. It's not like everything is bad, but not everything is up to the standard either. So that is a risk living in this world. Anything you depend on, you're taking a risk. But you have to depend on something in order to function. So ultimately, it takes some intelligence, some experience, and ultimately, Krishna. Depend on Krishna. Thank you, Maharaj. So much to reflect on. Not everything is going to be easy or nice, but if you depend on Krishna, at least you won't become a victim. <laughs> Manaj, in my experience, I found that sometimes I've got into situations due to Krishna's blessings, but he's also removed them suddenly from me to protect me. Is, is that true? Does he work like that? He does work like that, but it's not every situation is the same. Yeah. You have to see why that happened the way it happened. Is there some message in there? 
there's a lot of times things apparently are going wrong, but they're leading to something beneficial. Thank you, Sil Page Prabhu. Thank you so much. Wonderful questions. Amazing questions. Any other questions before we end this class? Any last minute comments? Any reflections? Um, clarification or doubts that you want to clarify? Yes, Mother Sukhavapra Mataji, go ahead. Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj. Please accept my humble obeisance and all glories with Shila Prabhupada and all glories to you, Lord, to speak. Guru Maharaj, on the notes when you say that we have to use our intelligence and um, do, this, do the stuff in this material world. So where is the borderline, the how much we use our intelligence? We have got limited intelligence. We can't use that much. So can we depend upon Krishna and take the decision or all the time we have to be very careful and just keep on looking for that? That is sometimes makes you so much stress, gives you so much stress as well. So how do we go about that? Yeah, and sometimes we, we use our intelligence, we have confidence that our intelligence is going to do things and we use it and it comes out something different and we're disappointed anyway. So exactly. whether you use your intelligence or not, um, ultimately you have to depend on Krishna. But Krishna says use your intelligence. Ultimately, because even if we, even the best plan doesn't mean it's going to work. It's because mm -hmm. we arranged it so nicely. So, yeah, there is, there's always a sense of risk. Just like, okay, you have to go, you have to travel. So you need to get on an airplane. Mm -hmm. so how much do you know about the pilot? Exactly, we have to depend upon the pilot. We can't, we can't check where the pilot got his education from. Yeah, well, you have faith in the company. You said the company seems to be authorized. They got their, you know, aerial licenses, and they passed all of the requirements, and therefore they're authorized. So, based on that much information, you take it. But still. You still don't know whether the pilot is drunk or not. He decides he has a fight with his wife that day, and he gets drunk, goes up to the airplane, and pretty soon is a disaster, you know. So there's always a risk in the material world. But you can minimize that by using your intelligence up to a certain degree and depend on Krishna. And so just like my sister was telling me, they were doing Sankirtan. Mm. So this was years ago. And they were going into a shopping mall. And she mm. was in part of the Sankirtan group. And uh, when she was going in, all of a sudden she heard a voice. The voice said, don't go in. So she said, oh, she recognized the voice not being a voice that she could connect with so she just mm -hmm. didn't go in and everybody got arrested who went in except her because she didn't go in the so later she, that was krishna krishna told her not to go in mm -hmm. so sometimes we have to pray to krishna and see how he gives us the direction and messages when we when we need to do something okay we can anticipate a situation ahead of time and make proper arrangements to be ready for whatever may happen and then act accordingly to minimize any negativity that may occur mm -hmm. if you know something is going to some people who are going to be where, where you're going to be may give you trouble so you think mm -hmm. trouble still i have to be there so how will I deal with it when they give me trouble? And you think like mm. that. Yeah. I mean, you, you, get, you prepare yourself. Yeah. So intelligence is the protecting force that allows the soul to move forward. Mm. If we depend on the mind, the mind can trick us. 
Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Yeah, intelligence means discrimination, determination. These are two features of the. Mm. Very good point, Guru Maharaj. Thank you so much. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Maharaj, you said determination and discrimination, right, Maharaj? Yeah. Oh, thank you, Maharaj. Any other yes, question sorry. from I'm sorry, March? Just mentioned. Thank you, March. Any other questions from devotees before we um, end this class? Any points that you would like to clarify? And in, if in, there, in, yes, March. In the Vedic culture, the Kshatriyas were in control, but even though they were intelligent, they still depended on the Brahmins for advice and guidance. There's a system. There's a system of operation which allows things to go on nicely. Taking help from scripture, taking help from from the guru, taking help from sadhu. Yeah. Thank you, Mark, for that point. Maybe we also have to take help, like you mentioned, from yeah. seniors and from spiritual masters. Yes, absolutely. Thank you, Marge. Marge, would you like to end the class with a round, or do you have something else planned? Well, I would not like to end the class with one round. I would like to end the class with two rounds.